Welcome back to Empower In. I'm so excited to have you here. I'm Caroline Porter Thomas. So a lot of you guys have been requesting tips for pharmacology and the truth is pharmacology is a huge, huge, huge subject and there's so much to know. There's so much to know about each medication and what to know before you give the medications. But what I thought we could do in this channel is maybe we could just go over some of the medications and I can teach you kind of how to think like a nurse before administering and how, and educating your patients on the medications. So if you guys are interested in this video and more videos like this, then please share this channel with your friends, like the video and post a comment, let me know what your thoughts are. So in this video, I thought we could review the medication heparin. We give this medication a lot in the hospital and it's a very good medication to prevent blood clots, but there's a lot of things that you do need to know before giving this medication. So I was thinking about it and there's certain questions that I ask myself before I ever give a medication and when I'm reviewing the new orders from the doctor. So the first question is why? Why is this medication ordered? And many times the reason is very clear. It could be a medication that the patient takes all the time at home and that's why the medication was ordered. It could be a medication that the patient needs um, to help the disease process that, process that he is admitted for. If the reason is not clear though, then what I usually try to do is I try to look into the doctor's notes to see why the medication is ordered and if it's not there then I don't hesitate to call the doctor and ask. But again, let's look at the medication heparin. So heparin in the hospital is an anticoagulant. This medication is used to prevent blood clots. It is not used to dissolve blood clots, it is used to prevent blood clots. That is an important thing to know when you are administering this medication. So what the first thing that I do is I ask for this patient, is this medication appropriate? Now, like I said, it could be a very clear cut reason or it might not be very clear. But for this medication, a lot of times we give it if the patient is, um, has a deep vein thrombosis, which means that they have a, thromb a blood clot in, the, in their legs. Um, we also can give it for a pulmonary embolism, which means that they have a blood clot in their lungs. And we can also give it if the patient has atrial fibrillation, which means that the atrium of the heart is quivering and it could actually get a blood clot. So, we, we also need to know if the dose is appropriate. So if the doctor gives heparin 5,000 units and that's sub-Q and that's every eight hours, that's a, that's a dose that we give a lot of times in the hospital. So I would say that that's appropriate. Otherwise, they could do a weight-based drip and that would be off of a calculation that we would get and we would be given the um, appropriate calculation from pharmacy and then we would take the patient's weight and we would adjust it accordingly. But we also need to know if the route is appropriate. Heparin is given in the hospital, and in the hospital we give it either IV or sub-Q. So if it's ordered any other way, we know it has to be a mistake. Another question that I always ask is what vital signs do I need to know before I administer this medication? Now for heparin, there's not really a specific um, vital sign that you need to know before you administer this medication, but, but in general, I just want to give you the questions that I usually ask myself. The next thing that I need to know is what lab values do I need to know before I give this medication. So heparin is, heparin is measured by the PTT. So a normal PTT I can't really give you because it is um, done by weight. What you need to know is if the PTT is severely elevated, then you want to question that order. Some other lab values that I look for before I give the medication heparin is I look to see if their H&H &H is within normal range and I'll tell you why. If they have a low h, &H which is hematocrit and hemoglobin, sorry, it's the opposite, hemoglobin and hematocrit, um, the, the top number is usually 12 or above, and the bottom number is usually 40, sorry, 35, 40 or above. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that that level is not low. If it's low, that could indicate some kind of bleeding. So let's just say it's slightly low and I have to and I'm ordered to administer heparin. So there's a few things that I would think about before administering this medication. First of all, I would see what they have been trending. So I, hopefully I have some lab values to go off of. So I'll look in the past few days. 
Sometimes what you will see, even though their hemoglobin and hematocrit is a little bit on the low side, sometimes you will notice that it's higher today than it has been in the past. And if that's the case, then I probably would just go ahead and administer the medication because it hasn't been causing any problems. What you want to be careful of is if you see a drop, especially a big drop. So if they yesterday they were 12.2 and today you know the hemoglobin is 12.2 and today the hemoglobin is 10, then you want to kind of find out what's been going on. So did they have surgery? Were they expected to lose blood? Sometimes if the patient's on IV fluid, um, dilution can occur. So if the patient was dehydrated, then sometimes their h, &H can appear higher than it normally would. And then once we give them IV fluids, it can dilute it and look as if it's less. But either way, I just want to run that by the doctor and make sure it's okay that I still got that medication. And I'll also write a quick note about it. Another lab value that I want to know before I administer heparin would be the platelet value. So are the platelets within normal range? Platelets should be 150,000 or above. So if I have a patient that their platelets low, very low at 50,000, I'm going to question that order. When I say question the order, what I'm going to do is clarify with the physician if this is appropriate because we need to find out if that is. Another thing that I like to know and like to think about is worst case scenario, what's the absolute worst thing that can happen to this patient if they have a reaction to the medication. Now when we're talking particularly to heparin, then there is a thing known as HIT. It's H-I-T. It's also known as heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, which means that their platelet level was at a normal level or normal for them, could be low, could be high, but whatever is normal for them, and they had a sudden, sudden decrease. This is not a normal reaction, it is actually considered an allergic reaction, and it sh you should notify the physician immediately, it is an emergency. So the medication usually has to be discontinued if the patient absolutely has to be on anticoagulants, then another source of anticoagulant therapy needs to be administered and not heparin. Another thing that's good to ask is, is there an antidote? An antidote is basically a reversal agent. So let's say that the patient does have heparin-induced cytopenia, or maybe it's not that critical, but let's say that the patient does have a reaction to the heparin medication and they're having a lot of bleeding. So is there an antidote to heparin? And there is, it's called protamine sulfate. One of the most frustrating things that I found about nursing school was that it basically teaches you to, it teaches you all of these facts and things about the medications, but it doesn't exactly teach you how to think like a nurse. But yet the questions that they ask you are in real life situations and scenarios, and you are kind of expected to know how to do that. So I thought that what we could do is I could discuss some potential questions that you might ask your patient or that you might see with the medication heparin. So I'm just making these questions up from real life scenarios, but let's just say something like this. Patient is admitted to the hospital and he's complaining of stomach pain. He has um, blood pressure that's on the low side, 90 over 50, and he also complains of black tarry stools. He also complains of dizziness and lightheadedness when standing up suddenly. So you kind of want to ask right away what kind of medications were you on. If they were on a medication called Lovenox because they had a blood clot in the past, Lovenox is a derivative of heparin, so they're kind of in the same, um, they're also anti, it's also an anticoagulant. So your main concern with this situation is GI bleed. Anything with low blood pressure, because that's a sign of volume depletion, and you also have black tarry stools that could, all, that could all of that can indicate GI bleeding, which is very dangerous, that's internal bleeding, and you want to make sure that proper care of this patient is taken, of, taken care of immediately. So another thing you want to look out for, remember, we're giving the medication to the patient. So you want to make sure that they're not on any NSAIDs, which is the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. Those medications in the class have been known to cause GI bleeding. So if they're taking this medication and then we're also giving an anticoagulation medication that was going to prevent them from clotting, it could cause a lot of problems. So you want to watch out for scenarios like that. Also, if you're giving heparin and they're on aspirin, like a regular aspirin a day, you might you just want to run that by the doctor and make sure that he still wants them to be on the aspirin because they're probably going to want to stop it while they're on the heparin. 
Some things that you would want to educate your patient on would be to watch for signs of bleeding. Um, usually we administer um, heparin and the subcutaneous fat about two inches away from the umbilicus area. So what you would want to do is tell them not to rub that area where the injection site was because that could make the medication go into the tissue and could cause a little hematoma or bruise. So what you would want to do is tell them to avoid that area but watch it, make sure that there's no bleeding and you would also want to educate them on using a electric razor as opposed to a regular razor and be careful when they're brushing their teeth or flossing. And if they do have any bleeding that's not stopping, so let's say that they floss too hard and they just have this like bleeding tooth that won't stop, they need to go see their doctor right away. If it's a lot of blood, tell them to come to the ER right away. So guys, if you like this video and you want more videos like this, then please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this channel, share with your friends, and the more subscribers and likes and comments I get, the more videos I can create. Alright, I love you guys. I can't wait to see you again. Bye!